Here's an equation that as we first look at it, it appears to be a radical equation. It has a radical expression in it. So we might approach this equation using our normal technique for solving a radical equation. And that is to first isolate the radical expression on one side of the equation, then raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power to undo the root. So in order to do that, I might add the square, the square root of x squared minus 3x to both sides, and I might subtract 2 from both sides so as to bring this term to the left side and move the radical expression to the right side to isolate it. Then I would raise both sides of the equation to the second power to undo the square root. Now, I'm not so sure this is what I really want to do. That's fine here. Squaring the square root of x squared minus 3x will just give us x squared minus 3x. Remember, squaring the square root just gives us the radicand. But I would have to square this trinomial that's here on the left side, which means I'd have to multiply it times itself. I'd have to write the trinomial down twice and multiply. Now, that to me looks like something that could get very messy. So I'm not sure I really want to do that. And as I look at this equation a little bit more, I notice that this portion is identical to that portion. So perhaps if I made a substitution, let's say making the substitution to let y equal x squared minus 3x, that could simplify the equation dramatically. So I'll let y equal x squared minus 3x. So this portion right here would just become y minus the square root of y equals 2. Now, that's a much less involved equation. And when I approach this now as a radical equation, and add the square root of y to both sides and subtract 2 from both sides. When I now raise both sides of this equation to the second power, it's not as difficult a task because here I'm just squaring a binomial. And I know my method for squaring a binomial. That's the FOIL method. And squaring the square root of y is just going to give me y. So here I will have y squared minus 2y minus 2y more. That's minus 4y. Minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. And then I can subtract y from both sides to put this new quadratic equation in standard form, which gives me, when I subtract y from both sides, it's going to give me minus 5y. And this is another one to look at and see if it's factorable. And it is. It will actually factor into y minus 4 times y minus 1. Minus 1y minus 4y more equals minus 5y. Minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. So my two solutions of this modified, simplified equation are that y equals 4 and y equals 1. So now I can take those values and put them in place here so that I can now have this pair of equations. which are two nice-looking quadratic equations I can solve. We'll subtract 4 from both sides there. Let's look at this one again to see if it's factorable.
and it is. X minus 4, X plus 1 would produce that trinomial under the FOIL method. The plus 1X minus 4X would combine to minus 3X minus 4 times plus 1 is minus 4. So my two solutions here are X equals 4, X equals negative 1. But looking at this other equation, x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0, I'm not too confident about that one being factorable. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. So let's take that equation. And solve it using the quadratic formula. So we, we would have x equals the opposite of b, so that's going to be 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that'll be the square of negative 3, minus 4, times the a value, which is 1, times the c value, which is negative 1. All of that divided by 2 times the a value, which is 1. So x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of, the square of negative 3 is 9, and that's going to be what? Plus 4, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 1 is 4, the minus, the minus here made plus, all of that over 2. So I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. And I can't simplify the square root of 13 anymore. So we have our solutions, our irrational solutions. So this equation, we've, we've come up with two rational solutions, two irrational solutions. Since the original equation was a radical equation, we would need to check all of our solutions. And I don't really want to take the time here on the video to do that. So if we check the answers that uh, I had given you on the review sheet for problem 14, excuse me, problem 12, the only two solutions that were solutions that worked were the rational solutions. The irrational solutions did not work when we substituted them back into the original equation. And should you want to try that yourself and test them, feel free to do that. It'd probably be a great little exercise in case some evening you're suffering from insomnia.